When I was a small boy, then we could see these images on TV. Trees, forests, which are suffering, dying from pollutants in the air. We're talking now about acid rain, acid rain formation. Do we still talk about it? Do we still see it as a major issue in our society? I don't think so. And why? Because we majorly solved the issue of acid rain formation. How did we do that? We chemists have developed the strategies to get rid of the molecules which are responsible for acid rain formation. Sulfur and nitrogen containing molecules, which we also call SO2 and NO2. So once we have defined the molecules, which were responsible, we chemists have been devising methods to remove these noxious compounds. So, for example, we have been making sulfur-free transportation fuels, like diesel and gasoline. And moreover, as maybe m many of you will know, we have been installing these devices in your cars, which you use nowadays. And we pull through, for example, nitrogen oxide, and then we transform it in nitrogen and oxygen from noxious to non-noxious, harmful, harmless. So, catalysts. What are catalysts? Catalysts are substances which speed up chemical reactions. So you can go faster from A to B if you think about cycling. So let's take that now a bit to more practice. So I have this tool with me, a catalyst. And here I show you molecules. And what we can do is with a catalyst, we can take the catalyst and we can start breaking bonds and we can make bonds. So we play with molecules, playing with chemical bonds, making them, breaking them. So I'm as a chemist, I'm a molecule maker, converting noxious to non-noxious or for non-useful to useful molecules. So that's what's my business. That's the reason why I like this profession. So, nowadays, with modern tools, we can even observe this bond-breaking, bond-making. And here in this movie, I show you these flashes, and each flash is the making and the baking of a bond, observed at a single molecule level. So, this is the way we have done it. So, this is the way we have been able to resolve the issue, mainly of acid rain formation. And it's interesting to know that in our areas, in our countries, like in the Netherlands, Germany, and so on, at this moment, farmers have to add sometimes even sulfur to their fertilizers to make sure that the crops are growing better. So we were maybe too good. We solved it maybe too good. These are my children. They don't talk about acid rain. They never heard about it, and hopefully they will never hear, it, hear about it. But these are the pictures they see now on TV. Cities, polluted sometimes, smog. And they hear on TV about climate change, rising sea levels, rising CO2 levels. So, I believe we chemists, again, solve this issue. Maybe ambitious, but let's try it. What is the bad guy? The bad guy is this molecule, CO2. And you can already imagine, if I take again my tool, that this is not easy. You see? It takes some energy. I come back to that energy later on. There are two main strategies to resolve it, in my opinion. And the first is, let's take the CO2 molecule and take water, and let's convert it in growing biomass. And we can make these wooden ships then out of it. And then, with this catalyst tool, we hope then to make our appliances, our fuels, our materials, which we now use, it in, use nowadays. Well, how would that look like? Here you see it. So what we are doing is effectively recycling CO2. So CO2 is captured by these growing trees. The trees we chop, we take the leaves, and we bring them to a factory, which is nothing else than a biorefinery. And there we make the normal products, which we are now receiving 
from, for example, an oil refinery. So, this works. Where are we now? Well, we are, in our lab, for example, making at this moment building blocks to make the tires of this car, to make the interior, to make the transportation fuel. So we are on our way. But would it not be enormously ambitious if we could just bypass this way of biomass? Would it not be good if we just would take CO2 and water right away and get it reacting? So let's do it. Let's see what we can do. So it takes CO2. And I hope you believe this is water. So then we start a reaction. As you can see, it starts a bit vigorously shaking. Then we take catalyst. So, and now we need energy, the sun. So if it's shining a lot with the sun, then hopefully at some point we make this molecule. And this molecule is nothing else than gasoline. So this would be wonderful if that would work out. So how would that now look like? How would the city look like if that would be possible? And here I show you this kind of apparatus, but now in a solar panel type, where CO2 and water is taken, and right away we can then have a kind of solar refinery, and where we can take up CO2 constantly and make our products. So. Where are we with this? I think it's too ambitious, and I must be fair, that this molecule we cannot make yet in the lab. So what is needed? What is needed is we need better catalysts, clearly. But maybe as well what we need are bright minds. So hopefully, at some point, when I'm retired, and maybe when I have grandchildren, they don't talk anymore about the CO2 issue. Maybe, as in the case of our farmers, as in the case of the SO2 and the sulfur addition, maybe we turned from a problem where we have a surplus of CO2 in a shortage of CO2 at certain places on Earth. Would that not be wonderful? And moreover, because I'm a professor teaching them the knowledge of catalysis, I hope that I've been, by then, raising a new generation of scientists which are able to tackle with their bright minds the challenges ahead of us. Thank you.